Hi, my name is Roisin from Sweet Eve Signs and today I'm going to show you how to design a 3D shaker cake topper in Cricut Design Space in less than 15 minutes. So let's get to it. So let's start with the text. Go into your fonts and select Amalfi Coast font. You would have needed to download this from the font prior to starting your topper. The link will be available in the description. Type out your desired text. You can type whatever you want a name, but I'm going to say hello. Ungroup and then move the H slightly closer and group the word together so that there are absolutely no gaps. Then enlarge your text. The reason why I do this is because it changes the way the offset works. So you need to apply a very thin offset. The bigger your word, the more intricate you'll get. I usually use 0.04, but you'll have to mess around with it to get the right size for you. Now go ahead and delete your original text. Now we're going to make the hole for the E, which disappeared when we did the offset. So you need to get a flattened circle shape from the shapes panel. We're gonna use this to create the hollow part. I make the font slightly bigger, just so it's easier to cut. Just move it around and position it where you think it looks right. Then select both and slice. You can go ahead and delete the little small part that came out of the E. Now we're going to do the number text. For this, you need to use a font that's already in Cricut Design Space, which is called Aldine. It's a really nice font. I use it often for numbers. Now I'm going to ungroup my numbers and move them closer together. You could also use the letter space panel to do this, but I prefer to do it this way because I feel I have a bit more control. If you are manually adjusting your numbers, it's always a good idea to make sure you align at the bottom and then just change the color of the text and the numbers. Now you're gonna spend some time just adjusting the position of the number to get it where you want it to be. You want it to be quite close to the L. This way, when you do your offset, it would all sit nicely together. Now you need to group both of these together and we're going to make it slightly bigger because we're going to do an offset. So using the offset feature, get it to the desired size. You want to make sure that the hello and the 21 connect on the first offset layer. You may need to spend a little bit of time adjusting this until you get it right. You don't want the offset to be too thick. Now you need to apply that same offset two more times. Now we're going to group it all together and we're going to use our layers panel to change each layer to a different colour. You don't have to do this, but personally it helps me to visualise how my design will be at the end. Try if you can to remember which colour represents which type of cardstock you're going to use or you could easily write this down. This is just a helpful tip. You might want to spend a bit of time getting this just right. Now we're going to make this slightly smaller and hide. We can hide your objects that are grouped in the right hand panel using the eye icon. This just allows you to work easily on other elements. Now head over to the shapes panel and select the arch. As you can see at the bottom, this arch has quite square corners and I want it to be more rounded. In order to get this effect, I'm going to apply an offset. Make sure that the corner selected is curved. Now you can go ahead and delete the original. You can leave this step out, but you will have a slightly different look to your topper and it will be more angular. In this instance, I changed the arch to a grey colour because I thought this was going to be my acetate but actually I ended up building out from this. So you don't have to change the colour unless you want to. Now do an inset so that we can start to build our frame. Now you need to select both of these shapes and slice. This is going to give us our frame. You can delete the two small inner arches as they are no longer required. Now we're going to select the offset tool and make a slight offset. Now making sure you're clicking on the inner part of the frame 
we're going to do an inset. Now we're going to change the colours using the right hand panel. This is just to help us to visualise the project a bit more, but again this is an optional step. You can change your colours at the end if you find it easier. Now align, centre and group your frame and duplicate. We're then going to weld this shape and we're going to go to our contours on the bottom right hand panel and hide all contours. We're then going to change this colour to grey and this is going to act as our acetate. Send your acetate to the back and align and centre and group your frame and your acetate. This is your first shaker done. Now we're going to duplicate and we're going to resize this to make our smaller shaker. Easy as that, your second shaker done. We're then going to change the colours because we want it to be slightly contrasting to the other shaker. At this stage, I forgot to duplicate my acetate, but you will need to duplicate the smaller and the larger acetate. So you will have four in total. Head over to the shapes panel and select another arch. We will need to resize this slightly to work with it. Then head back over to the shapes panel and select a square. You're going to need to unlock your square so that you can make it as long as the arch that you're working with. We're going to make it go about halfway through so that we can slice and have an almost half arch effect. Just delete everything apart from one of the arches. At this point, I would say duplicate this arch. It's one step that I forgot to do and made the process a little bit longer than it needed to be. You can unlock and adjust your arch at this stage if you want to. Head over to the layers panel and get yourself another square. And the same as before, unlock the square so that you can create a length that's just as long as your arch. I'm trying to create a strip so that I can add this onto the edge of the arch. At this stage, if I had a duplicate arch, I would have saved myself a bit of time. But anyway, you're going to select these and slice. The reason why I say send to the back is so that you can kind of see how thick the strip is going to be. You go ahead and delete one of the strips. Then I'm going to change the colour of my arch. And I'm going to make sure that I align the strip with the arch. It's really important that you align the shape and the strip correctly. Because I didn't duplicate the original shape, I'm now going to have to create it again. So I'm going to select both of these, make sure that they're fully aligned, group them and then duplicate. You now need to take the duplicated arch and weld it together. I'm then going to ungroup the one on the left and I'm going to change the colour of this arch. When I ungroup, you'll see that the strip is separated and the shape on the left is slightly smaller and we don't want that. We want the strip to be able to sit nicely on top of the arch. So now you can go ahead and delete the original. Make sure you align at the bottom and group this new shape. Now this is going to be your half arch. I'm going to take the smaller shaker and put it in front of the bigger shaker and make sure that you align at the bottom. I'm now going to take my half arch and I'm going to create an offset. I'm just going to change the colour of the offset. Then make sure you centre and group. Now you're going to take your arch and you're going to make sure that you centre the back. At this point you might want to unlock and adjust it to make sure that the proportions are right. 
Then select all and make sure you align at the bottom. Aligning everything at the bottom will just mean that you'll have a smooth edge across the bottom of your shaker. And that's it, that's your main shaker done. So now I want you to unhide the text using the right hand panel. You can unhide text using the eye icon for anything that's grouped. And make sure you send it to the front. You're going to need to adjust your size and your positioning to get this just where you want it to be. But I would suggest having a slight hangover of the H and the O. I just think it adds a nicer look. Now you need to duplicate this. We're going to work on the backing of the shaker, which will help give it stability and more dimension. So head over to your panels and make sure that you delete acetate layers. I then want you to go ahead and delete all the text using the right hand panel as well. Then I want you to select the shape and weld. This will be the second layer behind your main shaker. Go ahead and hide this new shape and unhide the original. Now we're going to create the last layer of the shaker. So what you'll need to do is again duplicate and hide the original. Now for this layer, we only want to delete the acetate. We want to leave the text intact. Now go ahead and weld. You can duplicate this shape again if you want to cover the stick at the back of your cake topper. Now make sure you unhide everything in the project to make sure that everything cuts out. At this point, you can mess around with the layers and send things to the front and the back so that you can see how your top will actually look in real life. And at this point, you might want to adjust some of the colours. And there you have it. That's your 3D Shaker cake topper design. Not too difficult, hey guys? Please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And an assembly video for this cake topper will be coming very soon. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok for quick tips and hacks and to see my work. Please feel free to comment if you have any specific requests. Take care. Bye.